So I'm not sure if f4 is any good. My bishop on c1 wants to have a have a square that it's good. Like Amazing Goid says, you want your pieces on squares that are most permanent. Or most. You want to put your pieces on squares that are. That are. Basically, you don't want your to move your pieces often. So. Queen c4, okay. Queen c5, this is the problem. No, his pieces are four, like I said. It's not really a problem, but it's attacking my bishop and my knight on c4. He has to move his knight on c3. I can get out of it in many ways playing queen d3. I play queen d3, but queen d3 fails to knight e5. knight c e2. And so knight c e2. So queen d3 doesn't work because of knight e5. So he has to play knight c e2. Okay, so this is the problem. I guess I have to play knight c e2. Right. But then I think you can take on e4. Knight c e2. And after queen takes e4, queen takes c4. Might win a pawn. Knight c e2. If I play queen d3, then he has rook d8, and that's going to be a problem. Okay. And if I play knight c e2, he doesn't have rooks to put more pressure on my queen. So this is this looks fine. Okay, so knight c e2. Think, or maybe he can take on e4. Yep. So now he realizes knight it's takes on e4. If queen takes knight. Queen takes bishop. Yep. Exactly. Yeah. So maybe knight takes e4 works. Knight b6. Uh, after knight b6, the bishop can just move back though to d3 and defend this pawn and defend the queen. I hope he doesn't see it. So knight b6 isn't. Knight takes e4. I don't see how. How can I take White advantage has some tricks from after that? Knight takes e4, but I think it does win a Or how do you? He's gonna be up a pawn. But he's special on C8 is still a problem, so even if he's up a pawn, I'm gonna get my bishop out. My uh, my bishop wants you one and put my rooks in the C file. But my pawns are everywhere. A4, B2, B4. I'm not sure if that's a good idea putting your pawns like that. So he did solid. I take C4. I take C4. Let's see. Do I have anything else? Okay. So what if I play b3? You can try maybe knight b3. If I take the knight, queen takes... You can try maybe bishop e3. Queen takes bishop. You can try maybe... Maybe we're about the knight same takes e6. Time, so How about knight takes e6? Let's see. And then if pawn takes bishop takes pawn and then queen takes knight. How about that? I could play bishop. Knight takes e6. T or bishop. I e2. like that move a lot. What does that do? I think. I think that looks good. So let's see if he sees that. So the idea is knight takes bishop e6, e pawn takes three. bishop takes e6, check I'm and then he takes knight. my bishop and I'm and getting he ready take to four queen and rook. put. My so other really like A1 to C1, so this looks good. Okay, so he played bishop E3, bishop so he missed knight D3, takes E6, I think. Or E3. 
I don't really want to take his knight because he's going to take tactic. our bishop. I'm pretty sure it works. We'll look at it after the game, but those are the type of tactics you have to look for when there's and all these pieces they going. can play Desperado tactics, B5. discovery tactics, checks, so A4 pins, was forks, actually skewers. not bad. <laughs> Double voice? Yeah, Mini. We're doing Inside the Mind of the Amateur. And hello. So, King's Attacker is playing and giving commentary. So here I'm kind of threatening to take on E6, Knight <laughs> Now E6. he Now he saw it. He saw it one move later. See? You guys, you guys hear him? He just said Knight takes E6. Knight takes E6. <laughs> he missed it. Forks. He missed it. So he has to move his queen on C7, I believe. If he moves it anywhere else, I'm getting his knight on e4. So this is getting tactical. This is very tactical. Black needs to be careful. And I'm also getting ready to put my my rook on a1 to c1. Okay, so he played uh -oh. knight d6. Okay. Knight d6. Here we go. So now uh -oh. the bishop's attacked. So if knight takes e6, now queen takes c4. What is this? Two pieces for rook. So that's not what good for... What is this? That's not good for uh, white. So he's going to get my bishop. Mm, should I play b3? Or my rook a c1? If I play b3, I'm saying I'm going to capture with my pawn and still be on this diagonal. Yeah, so you want to play b3, so if knight takes bishop, pawn takes, so he's still on that diagonal. discovery. Um, mm. try to think he has something better. Should I play b3 or rook a c1? Or do I have anything else? I don't think he has anything else. The problem is that bishop on c4 is just hanging. So queen takes c4 is a threat. No matter where that knight goes. I'm just gonna do okay. this. So now they can go go for a queen Maybe trade. Double up the rooks on the C file. I'm down a pawn and I'm still fine. Okay, so forcing queen trade. So white has more pressure, but he is down a full pawn. So his pieces Black are definitely is better. Black passive, housed. but so. white is more. Dynamic. Yep. He's right. But black does have so two bishops. Bishop b7. Well, his bishop was attacked. It's actually a bad move. Bad move? What does he think? Should have played bishop a5 or something oh. to prevent my rook from going to... c7? c7. Well, you can you always play bishop, bishop d6 and kick the rook out. Yeah. Just going to double matter. on the c file. Okay, so doubling on the c file makes sense. So now maybe uh, white or black can play knight to b My knight knight needs to needs to with the idea of knight to d5. Get into action. Defending e7. A knight on e2 is everything. doing so nothing. So knight b6 played. So now for so c7, now, you can either play bishop d6 or you can play knight d5. Now I have threats. Both moves are good. Some kind of threats. And watch the time, guys. Watch the time. He's hitting my rook. My rook needs to move. Needs to move quickly. Should I play rook? C7. Let's see if black's gonna play bishop d6. Bishop d6 or knight d5. Oh, yeah, no. it looks like Black is holding this well, and he's up a pawn. 
Oh no. But white still has some pressure. I mean, the bishop is still he hard to develop. See this. But yeah, he missed that. So rook c2. So now black can either simply play bishop to d7, and then just massive trades on the c-file. I think bishop to d7 makes the most sense, because now you're threatening a4, down, and then you're threatening also rook c8. 20 seconds, we need to get rolling. So bishop d7 makes sense here. If he takes my bishop on Knight takes e3 is a good move too, but... Then it's after bishop d7, you can play like rook c7, and then skewer the bishops. So, this might take advantage of this knight on Or maybe first. my rook's on the c file. But, uh, yeah, I think can white's slowly losing whatever stuff. initiative he had. Okay, bishop d7, good move. So, he, he's deciding not to... ...do anything. So now... Yeah, tricky knights, exactly. And now, white does not want to trade rooks. do this? White does not want to trade rooks, okay. So now, black can take on e3, or, or play knight okay, b4. he's Grenier taking two. my rooks. So now the rook has to move to d2, or e2, probably d2. Yep. And now, the bishop could be attacked. Draw? I don't think so. I think black is better here. So I'm indirectly eyeing the bishop on d7. Put this knight on okay, b4. So bishop c6. I don't like that move. I don't like should that I move. Should I take that bishop? Yeah, I should take that bishop. Okay, now bishop to b6 is a good move. And maybe... Because now you're stopping rook d8. You want to keep your rook on the, the default. Okay, now he can simply play rook to... Oh, man. Rook to... Rook a... Well, maybe this so is okay for white too. So if knight ever moves, rook takes I would have preferred bishop b6 first, but maybe this is good too. Maybe if he plays rook b8. Uh, yeah, now he can play I can bishop, play bishop f4. f4. If he plays e5, I'm just going to take. Yep, he's if right. If he plays e5, I'm taking the pawn. Yeah, if e5, bishop takes e5 is good. And if the rook moves, you take on 